Welcome to the St. Michael Fall Podcast Series. My name is Ken Brannan, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this fall is Gifted, identifying, developing, and practicing the gifts that God has given us. May we offer our gifts joyfully for the sake of the Church and the world. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. A reading from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. Jesus said, Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, Let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, for they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Here ends the reading. The scripture lesson for today begins on a negative note. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. Then Jesus, with a funny story about a speck in a log, encourages his listeners to extend the same mercy to others that we would like to see extended to ourselves. Once again, Jesus decenters us. Jesus reminds us of what psychologists have been saying for decades we don't always see ourselves clearly. Sometimes it's easier to see the flaws in others than the flaws in ourselves. This is very true. But I think the opposite is also true. Sometimes we don't see our own gifts clearly. We can see the gifts of others, kindness, mercy, generosity, love, wisdom, but we have trouble seeing our own gifts. Just as we can be blind to our flaws, we can also be blind to the treasures that the Holy Spirit has poured into our hearts. When I was fresh out of graduate school, I worked as a drama therapist at a psychiatric hospital in the Bronx. While the psychiatrists, nurses, and social workers worked with patients individually, I worked with patients in groups using the dramatic tools of improvisation, mask making, and role playing. There were some ground rules in my drama therapy groups. Be safe, be honest, be patient, and have fun. Rather than going directly at the diagnosis or the dysfunction, we would create a space where people could play and imagine new ways of being. Those with psychiatric diagnoses are often painfully restricted in how they see themselves and see the world. My job was to create a space where they could expand their perceptions and behaviors. Together, we became more human in the best sense of the word. There was a period of months when several people referred to my group died suddenly and unexpectedly. One was in a car accident. Another succumbed to a physical ailment that had been bothering her for months. Another committed suicide. It was awful. This may have been my job, but I loved these people. It was difficult to have so many people die in a short period of time. It got to the point where a staff member in team meeting joked, be careful about referring someone to Ken's group. They might just die. Gallows humor goes a long way in surviving difficult situations. But at the same meeting, another nurse spoke up. You know what I think, she said? I think Ken's group is full of healing. And I think those who died were given a gift before they died. They were able to find safety, play, and respect. Things that are scarce in their lives. The way I see it, folks going to Ken's group are being set free. What an amazing thing to say. This nurse was able to see my work in a way that I couldn't see it for myself. 
She called out the values that were core to my work and made it clear that I was offering something essential, not only for the patients, but for the staff as well. She actually helped me see that I had the gift of healing. Each of us is gifted by God. Each of us has something essential to offer the larger community. Sometimes we can see our gifts clearly, and sometimes we can't. That's why it's so important to tell one another when we see their spiritual gifts at work. It not only roots us in gratitude, it also amplifies the gifts that are already being expressed. St. Matthew is right. Do not judge. But I suggest we go a step farther. Let's call out one another's spiritual gifts when we see them, so we become an affirming community. Let's shine light on the work of the Holy Spirit that otherwise might go unnoticed. As we said at the beginning of the podcast, the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Let's let everybody see those gifts. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ever-living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him, that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.